Hey gang, Jones here, back with another video here today. And today we're gonna go over patch two. I made a previous video about this, but we got the full patch notes and it was live as of yesterday. So we're gonna talk about it, go into detail. Let's get into it. So the biggest thing being nine new LZs have been added. Now, thanks for the help over at the guys at uh, Crazy and Tac Map. I have this map and it shows you the ones in purple are actually the new LZs. Very, very easy. I'm gonna leave a link to their website in my description, very, very useful for new players to figure out where to go, or even new players that want to try to figure out a quest. So you see the purple LZs, and you see how they're kind of spaced out and kind of away more than the POIs. So it kind of makes it safer. You know, people aren't just, you know, ringing the dinner bell when they hear a heli and then running over and trying to kill you as soon as you get out of the helicopter. Also, they added LZ destinations. So you can see on this picture on the top right, it'll show you where the landing destination, the pickup is, and then the landing destination. So that's cool. So you can click on a heli and see where it goes. So hopefully it'll save a lot of people time on where they're going, especially into base. Instead of waiting to call them one or hoping that you can get one, you can just hop on one of theirs, take a ride with them. It saves a lot of time and saves headaches. So I'm not going to go into every single detail. I'm going to leave the link to the actual patch notes below in the description. You can feel free to click on that and go through absolutely everything that they have because there's a bunch, but I'm just going to go through the main highlights that I saw and the changes that I thought were important for to tell people. Notification when you get invited while in game. So I know a lot of times I've been in game, been invited. I don't wait, I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't invite me and then I have to go search through my messages to see if they actually invited me and then click on that. So that has been fixed. Also, they fixed the duplicate exploit. This is great. It's great to see that people aren't taking advantage of the game. I mean, the only times that I had really seen it is when people were actually helping new players, but still it needs to be stopped because people will abuse it not only to help people, but just to help themselves and then ruin the whole experience of the game. And it's great to see that they actually fix that. There is an optimization for rubber banding. We've seen a lot of this stuff. We saw this from the previous patch too. They're really focusing on rubber banding and like improving their server performance which server performance will also help AI eventually, but there's an optimization for rubber banding. There is a new setting added. So with your ADS sensitivity added, so you can change your sensitivity just when you are ADS looking down a scope or site. So that's cool to see, because I know when I play most games, I have a one sensitivity where I like to like look around and stuff like that. But then when I'm aiming, I, have, I like to have it a little bit lower. So that helps with being more precise, you know, when you're in gunfights and you can feel more in control. So sounds to vendor progression. So I really like this change, even though you could tell when you upgraded vendors just by the items that were available, because obviously you get more as you level up. It's nice to have a sound with it to know that you did level them up instead of just looking around and seeing. So that's a small quality of life thing. I wish that you could separate by levels. So I wish you could do like, you know, one, two, three, instead of just, you just have one menu of whatever level you're on. I wish they would separate those. That's not a big deal. That's just a personal preference of me especially when wipes happen and you're maybe trying to make videos on builds for guns. You can be like, hey, this level one trader, you can make this gun. So hopefully they'll add that, you know, eventually later down the road, but it's not a big deal, but glad to see that you have a sound that coordinates with you, you know, leveling up a vendor. Various VRAM optimizations to the game. So it's very nice to see that optimization is still on top of their list as they have kept it there for a very long time. They want a stable and optimized game. So that's very nice to see. I have not got a chance to play it because life has gotten in the way. I didn't even get to release this video yesterday because of that. But from what I've been seeing on Twitter and other things like that, it has helped and has helped in Tiger Bay, especially people have noticed that. So that's something to look forward to. Guys, if you are enjoying the video and want to keep up with crazy news and content, consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. So vendor confirmation when leaving items in the transaction cart to confirm if you want to leave. So this was going to save a bunch of headaches for people that like have a bunch of items in the cart and they accidentally click something or click out of somewhere. It'll actually save you by saying, hey, do you want to leave or not? So that's cool. That'll save a bunch of headaches. Now load magazines. It'll take ammo from the person instead of the locker. I'm not a huge fan of this just because it's more convenient because you usually have like a bunch of armor in your locker, but it totally makes sense when you're loading the magazine. You obviously want to take it from your own pockets rather than just an invisible locker you can't even see. They renamed the MK-18 to the DDM-4, which in my opinion makes sense. It's basically the same gun. I mean, I don't know anything about guns, but it just acts the same as the gun. It's just a better version of the regular M4. They fixed an issue where players could not be finished off within a coma. So I remember early in the game, I was confused. I thought this was just a mechanic of the game. I mean, it didn't really bother me anyway. It didn't make sense to me at the time, but I just thought it was a mechanic of the game. So they fixed that where if you like an enemy player is in a coma, you can shoot them and finish them off. To take, to take their stuff rather than just sitting there waiting for them to, you know, pass away 
while they're in that coma and then loot them. So you'll be able to, you know, if you do get into PvP or whatever, you'll be able to loot their bodies faster because the, you can finish them off. They fixed an issue where bodies would be invisible but still lootable. That was an issue. I never ran into it personally, but apparently there was people's bodies being invisible and they were still being able to be lootable or the body was still there and the game didn't recognize the body was still there, so it was invisible. I'm not for sure exactly what happened, but they fixed that issue where a body would be invisible but still lootable. So this is a really cool quality of life that has affected me like multiple times. It's an issue where items would disappear when moving them into your stash. This has happened to me a multiple times. I've moved it out of like my character and tried to put it in there, and then it would just vanish, it seemed like. Now, sometimes it would just go into a bag that was near it, but other times the, the item would just completely vanish. So that happened to me multiple times. Glad to see that fixed. Fix an issue where glass on some doors and windows, which caused them to be bulletproof. This is huge, especially around like Fort Nareth. I remember being in the building and trying to shoot people outside of it, like on the airfield and stuff like that. And sometimes they would just be bulletproof or through the doors and stuff like that. That is very, very cool to see. Players being unable to see their dead body because it fell through the floor. I noticed this a lot outside of uh, the Mithras fob, like right out on the beginning road. I noticed this player's body would just fall straight through the floor and you couldn't loot him and it was horrible. And I'm glad to see that's fixed. The tracer effect not being visible. So they fixed that. So they're a tracer round. So the M856A1 round that has a tracer on it, it has been fixed where the tracer effect actually works. Now when the night patch releases, it is not smart to do this, but I think you can make some really cool effects, you know, being in a firefight and those tracer rounds going everywhere. I think that would be super, super cool. So finally, they tweaked weapon and character animations. So that's nice to see because the game is focused on like optimization stability. I didn't even think character and weapon animation was even close to the top of the list. So that's cool. That they're actually looking at those animations and then tweak them a little bit. That is super cool and super nice to see. I'm glad that they're taking not only optimization, but just a broad spectrum of problems and being like, hey, we need to fix this. So this is a huge patch. It seems to be working flawlessly, and I think it's because of the lessons learned and then, then extensively testing. They did a great, great job, and I want to you know, commend them on that. Anyway, guys, I'm Jones, and I'm out. Peace.